and ultimate day of the Swiss stage here in Berlin, Germany. Only two days left to go right here. Then we're moving on to Paris and we're still looking for the rest of our teams to join our quarterfinal in the tees already. And today could be a day of humongous heartbreak for the likes of Fnatic or Weibo or Gam or TL because it is Elimination Day, Elimination Series only. And even if you win, you still have to win tomorrow. Oof, it's going to be a day, Dog Dinosaur. It is definitely going to be a day. But what I'm very excited for to see how this one's all going to pan out. Yeah, absolutely. And it can be a day of happiness. It if you be. play really well, you can be excited for tomorrow. For at least a day. Absolutely. I love it. The glass is, the glass is definitely... Um, needing to be drank if you look at some <laughs> of these games. Uh, however, water. though, I She's do want to... water. Yeah. Water, water. Stay water. hydrated. <laughs> yes. Uh, and to recap some of the Swiss stage so far, I wanted to take a look again at some of our Hoopu comments, of course. Uh, the Hoopu comments, they you can find them on X at Hoopu Esports. They're from the Chinese forums. And I can say that generally they're a lot more savage than ours. Let us I see what I they cooked so up much. for us. <laughs> yeah. I love them too. Yeah, yeah. They're smart. Um, okay, this is about DK. My first reaction after DK banned your rumble and Renekton is like, got this game. The, I, I will say, yeah. this is what, what I always tell when I'm playing League with my friends and one of my friends runs it down, I ban their champion next game. Yeah, and yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. all right, I'm feeling good about this next game. <laughs> I mean, they 2 0 them. They also, they just don't like 369. They're always flaming him. Do you know what yeah. that's about? No, I mean, like, domestically, his Renekton was actually pretty good. Yeah. And I think he, he played really well off of, like, side lanes into going for these, like, crashes on mid and making things all really good. So I'm surprised to see him flame him this much. The rumble, I kind of get. It feels like he's smurfed for the last series. He that did. is fair. That is fair. But I think like it's been four years since I really saw 369 as a carry player. I think he's fully taken on the tank mantle. I see what you mean. <laughs> well, they're already heading to Paris, so uh, he can practice that Renekton if he so pleases. Let's take a look at the second one. I think it's from FlyQuest versus HLE. After all these years, I can still see Whippo getting beat down. Remind me of oh. Fall. Oh. Okay, these are Chinese comments, okay. so we can see why. Okay. That Oof. one's kind of mean. He had a good series. <laughs> Come on. I mean, I understand he it. it. Yeah. They, they were really close to actually winning in game one. They won in game two. Game three, okay. Okay, you got me. <laughs> they maybe got they yeah. maybe got beat up a little bit in game three. There was yeah, there was a little whoopsies here and there. But yeah, okay, overall, okay, like, fair yeah. enough. I think there's a bit of like madness to the scientist that Whipple is at times where he kinda needs to send it, but yeah, I think it's a little bit hard. I think yeah. they also really appreciate his playstyle though, but of course they had to call back to the IG Fanatic series back in twenty eighteen. He's a different player now, okay. Uh PSG versus BLG. What do we got? This is the best performing and best carry jacks I have ever seen. You might not be the best top laner in the world, but you're the best checks in the world, <laughs> for sure, about Bin. He's definitely in the conversation of best top player in yeah. the world. This guy is an absolute monster, but there is no doubt he's the best jack. No, I mean, I get it, though, because when you look at the rest of Swiss, I I thought Bin was going to dominate harder. I'm just going to say it. And I feel like he really did come online on this Jax yesterday. I feel like he's doing all right. I feel like it's the rest of the team crumbly. You know, <laughs> what can you do? But yeah, I don't know. What do you think? He hasn't got a pentakill every game. Yeah. That is true. That is How true. How dare yeah. he? Come on. No Fiora. I what are you doing? Of, uh, my top laner. But the, the Jax was insane yesterday. Would not die. Uh, and of course, that was good news for BLG because they're still in it. They're playing maybe G2 tomorrow. Who knows? <laughs> Knight, are you watching this game? <laughs> like the best Ari in the world. Come on, man. They're just brutal. Like, people are just catching strays. He's not even in the game. Yeah, I think it's it's like Knight, Xiaohu, 369 are always catching strays. Yeah. yeah. Also, like, Knight's Ari was actually really good that game. That yeah. He did play. It's like, what do you mean? The guy is like, He's he was got the like one a 90% win rate yeah. on her. It's like ridiculous. Yeah, exactly. It's insane. Uh, but yeah, Faker was huge yesterday again for T1. That globe is definitely continuing. But generally, that have been. Uh, there has been a lot of discussion about can the West beat LPL or LCK teams, and I want to see what Umti has to say about it. I think that's the thing. I just want Team Liquid to play well, mm. and not even Team Liquid. Yeah. I actually think I want uh, FlyQuest and Hunter Thief play well for like our just region for mm. LCS. Because what I really hate to hear recently is like at the spring when I win the LCS was. Like a lot of people were saying that while wow, Omti was like shit at the LCK, he just go LCK, he just instantly got the first. I think we just got to level up a lot, but mm. they thought we were just shit. Yeah. I was so sad to hear that. And Summer, I heard that Quad is winning. I actually think that must be celebrated a lot because he leveled up. Mm. But everyone, like not everyone, some of some of the people are thinking that oh LCK is shit region. Omti and Quad just go there and just win. I'm mm. like so sad to hear that, you know. Yeah. Like, because these guys are trying so hard and. I saw like everyone like thinking that LCS is like just like lazy people or something, but I just think that I just hear and realize these guys are not lazy and trying hard. Mm -hmm. And 
I don't want LCS to be like that painful, I would say. Everyone is feeling very sad, sad emotion for that, you know. I can imagine, of course, Team Liquid is going up versus Gam in our second best of three of the day. It's also elimination, but to that clip, I, I think the one thing you definitely cannot say about Team Liquid is that they don't prep or they don't work hard. I think it's been very obvious if you've paid any attention throughout the year. So I do think that's fair. I mean, this team is working as hard as any team in the world. I can confidently say that. They're adding extra scrim blocks every single day. They're there till late hours grinding solo queue after. They're reviewing the VODs immediately after every single game they play, win or loss. Sometimes in interviews, if you go to interview the players, they are on it already, watching their phone and VOD reviewing. But I think that's the case, right? Like, it's impossible to get this much improvement without having put in those man hours. And it's not only showing both individually for some of the players like APA and Yon, I know you've been a bit advocate mm -hmm. for, but also just stepping up in the, or across the team as well. Like, they are contesting, if not should be winning a lot of these games against LPL and LCK top seeds. Like, this is this but, should be I mean, time. that's where I'm just going to be chat right now. Then why haven't they, right? That's what they're going to say. You're saying they're performing so, so insanely, but they are in this elimination match. And I think that's the gist of it for today, for the second best of three to me, Azale, is will they be able to show it in time? Because you know that it is there, but uh, this jungle matchup is going to be one to look out for to start. I mean, that's always the question, right? You only have so many opportunities, and you're working towards it all year long to have this really brief window where you have to perform at the very highest level to be able to showcase what you worked for. And that is where I think nerves come in. That is where I think, you know, the expectations can sometimes weigh them down a little bit when they're looking at these teams and seeing the nameplates. Yeah, and uh, Levi, of course, is on GAM. There is the merger in the APAC region next year. Uh, I believe he's also said that he's looking to retire. So there are so many stakes, and I think we look at it from our uh, kind of our Western, with our Western glasses on, right? But this is a huge storyline going into this matchup as well. Yeah, and I actually, I started watching a a documentary the VCS put out six months ago about Leva called the Golden Icon. It's a really interesting story piece just to see every like the trials and tribulations this guy's gone through. Both like battling an illness as well, having to drop out for a little bit early in his career, then moving over after taking over the VCS moving across the 100 Thieves Academy, trying to find himself there, but struggling living by himself for a long time. And then he comes onto these international stages. And for so often now, he's been the face of the VCS. This guy, like, is basically the face of the jungle, apart from like SOFM who went to the LPL, right? So he comes in with these monumental moments at internationals that we all remember, like the very early five minute Nocturne Ultimate down at the bot lane to beat Fnatic. 2017. 2017, sorry, where even then it just feels like so often this is the guy that is the assassination of targets that are way above their belt weight when it comes into this. Killed TL last year. Exactly. Yep. Um, so it's, a, it's an awesome grudge match later. Uh, maybe not so awesome if you're an LCS fan, of course. It's gonna be awesome, it's okay? It's gonna be awesome, okay. Uh, and now I get the stress as well because Fnatic is up to bat first versus Weibo. Uh, and yeah, Fnatic, I mean, where do we even start? They unfortunately have shown the same mistakes that um, they have struggled with the entire year in terms of often getting a lead and losing the plot completely in the mid game. Uh, what do we think about the Yone case? To remind people, Yone was let through in their match versus TES and then they picked Smolder. Then Jun came out in an interview to say, I don't know what happened, we're supposed to ban it. Then he rescinded his word. So what do we think? I'm a bit all over the place with this one, to be honest. It feels like Fnatic, it almost is an extension of their gameplay to me, where it feels like they're all trying to figure out what the hell they're supposed to be doing, and now coming into their battle with this Yone pick as well. It feels like the dis so much discourse has been sown across them that I don't know how their mental is coming into this game, what the hell they're supposed to be thinking, because it feels like everything gets just tossed up into I think the we air. can all agree, though, Yone should be banned. It's yes, true. It is. <laughs> true. Yeah. Uh, Fnatic is trying to kind of counterpunch on socials, though. Let's take a look. So, Jun, how was Scream today? I mean, it's pretty, it's, I'm not sure. I mean, Scream is mega good. They were amazing. Sick! They're self aware. <laughs> Let's go! Um, I mean,. I kind of like it, you know, why not take it uh, in a humorous fashion? But I guess the issue has been, Dagda, that 
um, in that TES game, uh, they kind of lost their head after doing some good things in the early game. Yeah, and I want to try and take a look at this through their gameplay as well, because it feels like we're still seeing the same mistakes from Fnatic that we've gotten throughout the year, which is they're never just satisfied with a little lead. They always feel like they have to blow up more, but also that over-aggression at the wrong time as well come back to bite them. So I got this clip here that Isael helped me pick out as well, which was really, really helpful. So I'm just going to roll through this as Fnatic go for this play on towards the top half of the map. and. As we start to roll through, you see they commit double TP here as they get on towards Jackie Love. But I just want to pause it right here as this play starts to kick off. And I want to bring up exactly what's happening on the mini map because you're moving your smoter out of the mid lane as well to try and make this big play happen. So this smoter that wants to scale and kind of have time to farm up and get those stacks, he's now been brought into the fight and that's been transitioned over towards Garner, which is just not going to have that same impact with that goal. I'm also looking at on the bottom half of the map, you've got this rumble that is going to be pushing in too. So this is just going to be completely pushed out then on that bottom side, which is also just going to give a ton of time for this rumble that was already set behind to get a ton of farm and get back into this game so already this play was going to be a bit dicey or just on the timing window that they have to operate but at least they do get jackie love they managed to get the push but here is where the overextension comes in instead of just being happy with that pushing out top being able to turn over towards the the objective that's about to spawn on top side they instead try to make this play around mid lane where oscar Rinnan finds the end pulls him out underneath the tower but they end up trying to overplay on towards this pick as well. And you're looking at, well, we've got Leona, we've got a Skarner, we've got all of our tanks here with a Cassante versus a Yone that is going to be able to CC everyone alongside the damage, the, or be the damage leader for the tanks that are there. And I think that's where it really starts to fall apart for Fnatic, where top esports who were, you know, four or 500 gold behind suddenly swing right back into the game and are able to come off the back of this looking good. Yeah, and I think it's frustrating because you've seen the same things happening over and over, Azale. Uh, Weibo, though, they also find themselves in this elimination match. So what has been your general impression of them? Uh, I don't think they're looking nearly as comfortable in this meta. You know, I think one of the things that really did enable them in the LPL was Xiaohu playing these AD carries and playing through side lane and having so much success on that. He's been so effective as a split pusher in the LPL for Weibo. And they've been on red side all three games. They're going to be on red side in this first game here. So it's going to be four straight red side games. And they're still, I think, kind of trying to play that old style that they had in the LPL, but now with just weaker champions. I mean, they played Tristana, they played uh, the Lucian. And when they did bring out Oriana, I think they looked a lot less comfortable playing what is kind of now standard. Makes sense. Yeah, I yeah, 100% agree. I think they the lack of side lane on the Oriana game really stood out to me, where it was like, oh, we're just going to overforce mid again and again. And Team Liquid were doing a great job of catching Weibo every time they try to make this play. So I think for me, for, for Fnatic, I want to look at that strategy and say, okay, can we get Humanoid onto something like a LeBlanc? Something that fits the meta, but can actually play out strongly through these side lanes and punish the fact that Weibo just don't look comfortable in that regard. It's interesting because we've seen the meta definitely uh, evolve, yet stay relatively open. They're still like yesterday. We've seen um, Aces up sleeve that can be pulled out. The Nuno, of course, we mm. saw as well, but the Gragas <laughs> counter yesterday to break up the comps, right? And I, I, I think that maybe with a little bit of rest and prep for these two teams, I'm hoping that uh, they come with similar game plans to really outdraft their opponent if they can. Absolutely. I mean, they've had some time. They got to watch all the other Swiss 2 games thus far. And I mean, you even look back to this G2 game. It was it was uh, the the pick for Broken Blade in the top lane, the Galio, where yeah. he's able to get that solo kill in top lane, right? We have seen some of these picks come out and be really, really effective. So I want to see, you know, what is the next evolution for these teams? What have they been able to learn from the other rosters that are playing in these earlier days to bring into their own game? And what's your gut check? Do you think Fnatic, since they're not very favored in this matchup, do you want to see them go to FlyQuest route? Yeah, yeah I, I think so. I mean, I think you're up against it. I do think they are the underdogs in this, so I don't think there's any reason to hold anything back. If you have a pocket pick that you've been practicing in scrims, if you have anything you think really could catch them off guard, throw it out. Give it your all. Yeah, our MasterCard fan prediction of the day feels the same because um, they don't have that much faith in Fnatic at 38.9% up versus 61 for Weibo. I think this is probably fair. 60, I would even say 70-30. Weibo perhaps, Daka? Yeah, I'm a little bit more unsure about Weibo than I think people are giving them credit for. I think they have looked very shaky in their games. Even in the Team Liquid game, like that one catch on Impact was really what brought them back into it. But that should have been a TL win. So I definitely think Weibo are favored coming into this. Just maybe not as heavily if Fnatic can bring out what I see is like a LeBlanc or a different kind of style for Humanoid that they can try and play through. Yeah, seeing an LPL seed go out in this stage is kind of unheard of also, right? Yeah, I mean, the pressure, I think, on them, you know, we talk a lot about from the Western point of view, of but course. the pressure, I mean, look at the Hubu comments. They are yeah. vicious. You know, we have VLG that, you know, could have potentially gone out early. We have Weibo that could potentially go out early. It's definitely a lot of pressure on these players. A lot of pressure on all of the players today. They do not want to go out now and in our first match specifically.
basically, if you're a fanatic, you do not want to leave your playing world on home soil. You got to make the best of it, but you're going to have to turn it completely around in this best of three versus Weibo. I would say I was very lost last Worlds, and I was losing a lot of confidence, and I didn't know how I wanted to play the game. As Gam stay alive here at Worlds, they'll send the North American third seed home. This Worlds, I was very confident going in. I think I can actually see myself knowing how to carry a game and knowing what I'm going to do. Jan's ready to go with the killer instinct. She turned up the wall. Jan goes, go! Jan, this kid will not lose! Bản thân em thì từ trước đến giờ, bản khắc từ thời điểm mà những thời điểm những cái lúc mà năm về các năm về trước thì bản thân em cũng như cả đội lúc nào cũng sẽ mong muốn là khu vực của mình sẽ vươn lên thứ 8. Đó được coi là một kỳ tích đối với đối với tiên thủ cũng như là đối với các khán giả ở khu vực VSS. Có thể nói thì đây là một kỳ thủ giới mà em tự tin nhất để mà có thể nói rằng là em bỏ bản thân em chứ đừng cả tiên sẽ đạt được thứ 8. I am proud of to be a part of my team. I think this time around we're completely different from last world. I'm very confident in playing against them. I'm excited for a rematch. Mình chỉ muốn nói bất kỳ đối thủ nào gặp gan thì bọn mình cũng sẽ chuẩn bị tinh thần và chiến đấu hết mình để mà hợi chiến thắng. Team và mình sẽ cố gắng hết mình cũng như là sẽ nỗ lực hết mình để mà có thể mang một cái vinh quang gì đó về cho VCS của mình. Gam, let's go again. I wouldn't say this is our peak form. Oh, I don't think we've been playing too well so far. 24 minutes is all it took. It was the same last year where we lost. This time we are ready to make it different. Last year, we were in the Rusland Cup. It was also a start of the game. Last year, for me, it was more confidence. No one expected Weibo to be the ones in this position. But this year, compared to last year, it is falling apart for Weibo. I think that it will give me more pressure. I can see a lot of problems for our team. But I can't change it very well. For me, I think it just increases the pressure from before. Knowing that if you lose next time, you are out. But I think it will also bring us confidence at the same time, because I think we do sometimes good in high-pressure situations. Fnatic will find the win. Fnatic is ready for the next match. My the way is to try to play from the top, and also to play some more decisive roles and to help the other team. And the goal is to win the game, of course. We are going to stomp you because this is our region. a lot that happened while we were gone. Very well, much looking forward to it. Well, first of all, LCK is doing great, boys. Oh, thanks, you, man. You, you guys are uh, yeah. arriving at a great time. Uh, of course, today we have some very stressful games as both of these teams uh, arriving on stage just now are talking about. You can tell both these teams oh, are really yeah. feeling the pressure. 
Uh, I mean, Xiaohu talking about it's so frustrating seeing all these fundamental issues within our own team, but being unable to quickly fix them. Time has run out at Worlds. We're, we're, we're already at the very end of it here for one of these two teams, so better fix the issues quickly. And then, of course, Fnatic outspoken about the draft issues and then letting the Yone through. Uh, I have a feeling that Yone will be banned. Uh, this, <laughs> I think so. I think series. so. I, I've seen some discussion within the team, oh, yeah. and uh, I think that perhaps maybe that's a consensus that they perhaps got to. It's, it's been a recurring theme, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, do we leave open Yone? Do we have enough counter picks to go through? I think, unfortunately, sometimes champions don't reach that point where, in theory, can be like, man, this counter, I, I swear this is going to work, and then in practice it just doesn't yeah. seem to really work out that way. And, and as the you know Nightshare, the coach was talking about, they they felt like they were in a situation where you you have to give something in draft. Um, let's get into this one though, as we will start out with the Poppy ban. Interesting. Already looking at so many different dash champions that Poppy would shut down. Meanwhile, Weibo respecting the Ivern from Razork going to be taken away, and as we dive through this draft, I'm kind of thinking that there's quite a few things that have been already left available, with only three bands left to go. Something good is getting through here, boys. And, and I want to pick up one interesting thing with the pattern from Fnatic. They have actually banned Aurora on blue side, oh, and they're going to do it Still. again. So that's one of the things. They had banned Aurora every single game thus far, which made me think maybe Humanoid and Arscurin are not quite ready um, with that champion, don't feel fully comfortable with it, because usually it's on red side to ban both the Aurora and the Yone, but uh, they obviously trade it here. And also, uh, if you are Fnatic in some scenarios, maybe you want to try and go for a trade, right? Uh, right take either the Yone or the Aurora. Not going to be the case. Interesting that the Skarner is the highest priority here. I do think that in the right situation, just don't, uh, can be really, really strong. But especially with the Poppy Band, I feel like the Vi power just rises up even more so. Makes a very proactive playstyle a lot easier to execute Ooh, as well. Stuff. But it looks yeah. like instead, Weibo going towards that direction as well with that Renekton and Lucian. And I love this because this makes it very easy for me. Because even when I was casting Xiaohu back in the LPL many, many years ago, he was still the Lucian guy. Mm -hmm. And so I just get to go back to my roots and think this is looking terrifying for Fnatic. This guy is so incredibly good at solo lane Lucian. And now that he's back, it could be scary. But that is also um, a hover that I'm not going to talk about. Okay, I was baited this one uh -huh. time. I'm not going to be baited anymore. Yeah, we'll see later on into the series if, uh, you know, Karthus or some other AP well, it, jungles Well, it could pop work up. on the Weibo side of things with uh, double very physical carries already. Very well could. Um, the, the Lucian, though, that you talk about for Xiaohu uh, and being both a top lane and a mid lane Lucian for him. <laughs> yeah. uh, different periods of his uh, career, definitely powerful. Of course, it technically could be flex pick, but that's what we're thinking for him. Nidalee and Zyra are kind of what you go towards. I do think with the Zyra specifically, uh, you are not as reliant on setup the way that you are with Nidalee. But given Tarzan's history, uh, I think that either would work quite well here. Jax being locked in as well. And yeah, that Nidalee makes sense. I do think that when it comes to the 2v2 mid jungle, it's a little bit weaker, but we saw it work with Tristana for basically the entirety of summer as well. And I know there are a lot of people that just generically hate Nidalee as a you know, competitive jungle pick, but Tarzan's Nidalee in LPL was insane. Oh, yeah. The amount of punishment uh, so early on too. So this already for Weibo is just screams so much early pressure. Uh, I, I feel like this is a very intelligent strat to go for against Fnatic since Razork has been exceptional, um, you know, and one of the best players for this team, a really big part of Fnatic's dominant early game. Yeah, the way that we talk about uh, Nidalee's is you need a Nidalee license. We have a few <laughs> players that have them Tarzan's in the LCK. Tarzan's definitely got it. <laughs> and Tarzan is definitely one of the players that even when he was still in Korea was uh, a holder of said license, um, but has only gotten better with time. So already a couple of bands to come through here as Ash and Ezreal taken away by Fnatic and the Ziggs and Kai'Sa. Very bottom lane themed as Misfortune is going to be picked up now Noah considering what he wants to do. Not the biggest fan of the misfortune. I do think that already there is obviously a ton of AD carry and bot lane bans. Zix also included. And MF does have a really solid laning phase. But for me, MF really looks at best when there is multiple sources of setup. And right now you have Nidalee and MF and your only CC on this team so far is Renekton. Yeah, and the Rel was already stolen away. So you're not going to get the Rel combo with the misfortune. So it's going to have to be another um, you know, like uh, Nautilus or Alistar or something. I mean, Alistar is always good into Rel and can be good set up for Misfortune. Ooh. So 
maybe that sort of, of angle. Yeah, purple coming in in the last couple of picks here with Syndra being locked in for Humanoid. A pick that we kind of thought was going to be more prevalent uh, here at Worlds, but hasn't really seen as much as Crisp. Yes, there's a fair bit of CC that he's going to be relied on. I think Leona or Nautilus, uh, certainly some champions with a lot of that. But I'm confused by the Kaiser ban because a lot of mixed damage coming out of that champion. And I think for solo AP Nidalee, it doesn't have the same feeling as like solo AP Karthus or Zyra that are very consistent in getting that damage down. I'm just looking forward to seeing the Syndra into Lucian because usually when you pick Syndra into these AD carries and you're looking for that R button outplay, uh, you know, maybe Shahu like rushes uh, an early Hex Drinker, no magic mantle at the very least, because that's exactly where the buffs for Syndra went. We're into the R damage and into that capability to at level six just destroy an AD carry. And both these compositions, particularly when you look towards uh, that mid lane jungle duo for, for Weibo and mid lane and AD carry for Fnatic. Like if you get ahead and you are the opposing team trying to play in either like the amount of lockdown that's available between Skarner, between Syndra and Varus, absolutely insane. Even if you're Leona trying to face check, that's really hard. I do think though that Weibo's laning strength is going to make it very hard for Fnatic to actually get to a point where you're ever to an objective first. And I think whoever falls apart, uh, falls behind early here is going to be in some really deep trouble because coming back, is going to really require uh, some major, major plays because I don't think there's a lot of angles. Yeah, and honestly, the best part of Fnatic's games have been their early games. Yeah. The later stages, you know, in uh, LEC were uh, a, a bit throwy, so definitely both teams fighting very heavy over that early prio. Well, now it is time to jump onto the rift for our very first game of this best of three. Fnatic taking on Weibo Gaming here. And I actually think that if there's ever a game where you want to have that Fnatic thing where you get ahead early, it's a game with a draft like this into what Weibo has. Because Weibo kind of have all of the power in the early game and will rely on the snowball. I don't think the same is true for what Fnatic have put forward here. It's a team fighting composition, lots of CC. I think at any point in the game, you can find a pick and turn things around. Whereas Weibo, like, we're all in. Renekton in Italy, if that doesn't work, if that doesn't get off the ground, you've got a handbag and a kitty cat. The only risk you do run with Fnatic if you do fall behind, although I do think their comp is, is definitely better just because of the prevalence of CC and setup on basically every single member of the team, is that if you fall too far behind against champions like Renekton and Lucian specifically, you just don't get to ever push in a wave. And if Nidalee gets fed, itemizing against her is going to be really hard. It looks like Noah is looking to go towards that lethality with the Halo Blades here, which I do think makes a lot of sense looking at what you're playing into. Both these comps are very bursty in terms of the damage. And he's also looking to go towards the top side for the lane swap here. So Fnatic with their sweeper, they chase out Tarzan to make sure Tarzan does not steal away, quote unquote, any of their camps on their weak side for this lane swap. Uh, the one big risk, especially versus champs like this that can really accelerate jungle is uh, giving some extra camps early to a Nidalee, because Nidalee will just severely outpace the Skarner uh, if you allow any of those extra ones stolen. So it should be a pretty normal and calm start here to the lane swap. The only thing is we don't see Jun actually soaking any experience in mid lane. Uh, the biggest kind of change was that supports uh, and top laners trying to get to their levels too, so they can teleport in and try and defend on the bottom tower, but just walked over there with zero experience on the rail. Feels like level one will be okay. Yeah, but I'm wondering whether Weibo have a plan for this, right? Because I think if you see this draft that they've put together, you're almost always lane swapping no matter what you have, because it's all about lane strength and power, and what their strategy is going to be is what I'm most interested in. So far, you can see the bottom side being cleared out by Tarzan, and possibly looking to just try and go for something here is a nice little stun from the Counter-Strike out of Oscar in and there, but otherwise not too much. Definitely somewhat of a risk taken, but I think you saw there as well. Oscar and June can play more aggressive the moment that brief TPs towards top side. I don't think Weibo really would have wanted to look to try and make a uh, 4v2 play. Not going to do nice that scatter. as a uh, scatter, as you point out there, from Humanoid. And, and in the counter picker, we'll see how much he's able to get out of it. Tarzan, as expected, just doing a great job on the clear. And right now, neither team seeming to get out too far ahead. It's Razor looking for a play on mid. Yeah, he's driving through. There is the turnaround, though, from Xiaohu. He does 
Uh, perhaps Tarzan here, but the first blood still just comes through and Tarzan diving onto Razov now underneath the turret and it's a double for the little tiger. My God! Big tiger yeah, now. This is, uh, yeah, this is, this is Shere Khan. He's, well, he's got Tarzan with him. They're used to that and they're pushing in this wave. That's a bit of a disaster. Uh, as it turns out, if you just hit your Nidalee Spears, you don't need setup. Yeah, I saw the, the scatter come through, the stun happened. I was thinking, that's going to be time for, like, we're just going to back away, it's going to be okay. But Shahu going very aggressive. I think there's very, very good, uh, you know, setup here by Weibo and Tarzan ready for it. That's the, one. The spear already hits, so Fnatic know that he's there, and then they still go for it. It's really hard to get a Skarner charge onto a Lucian. Shahu just goes straight in onto him. But you have to say, Tarzan spears, they just don't miss. And so, as you're saying, that makes it very easy to play the 2v2. If all your spears are going to hit, you know, Humanoid just down. He technically, he still does have his flash, which is saved. But, um, you know, that is going to be very hard, even with a flash advantage, to retake control from a Lucian that has all of it, this early prio. And now he's 2-0. and zero. I got to say, the fact that they knew as well that Tarzan was already put that play in a different light for me. Yeah, we right. We didn't saw that initially, right? But the moment that first spear hits, I think you have to peace out. I don't think you should be looking for these 2v2s early on, because the amount of damage that the Nidalee and Lucian have that is... Uh, gonna really outpace what, like, especially a level free Skarner is gonna be able to do. And realistically, Xiaohu, like, at worst flashes, but he should never really be in any threat on the Lucian when Skarner tries to look for a gank like that. Yeah, and, and you just see the difference in skirmishing there. I mean, it's it's the mobility of Lucian with the dash and being very willing to instantly flash in on the Syndra, uh, finish off this kill. And Whereas... we're, thinking, we're thinking as well, that this could have been one of the weak points uh, for Weibo as well, with the fact that there's zero CC, but there is CC on this bottom side. Crashdown going to be flashed here by Light. Creates some distance, but the Zenith Blade gets Crisp right back in there. Jun burning down, but still trying to turn. Finds a Shattering Strike, but otherwise we're just going to back away, sharing some health bars. Really, really big win there for Fnatic. Able to get both summoners out of Light. We have seen that Miss Fortune in general can really struggle, given that she doesn't have an escape. It's very quick, but when you're playing against the amount of lockdown that's available for Fnatic, that is definitely big. My oh, main question nice is going to be, can they actually use it and get anything out of it? Because just as someone that's being down alone, not really enough. Man, I just love watching uh, Shahu here in the mid lane as well. He's going to be so confident with his extra gold. He did not, and by the way, invest into any early No Magic Mantle. <laughs> He's going straight, oh, no. straight offense first. Yep, Rikopo already in his inventory. Uh, unfortunately, Humanoid only with a book. He's uh, still just trying to build up these splinters, get to that point where you can press your gameplay button, which is located on R, and uh, just force your opponent to not be able to play the game. Tarzan will be starting off these grubs, and of course, Nidalee pretty happily uh, getting through those. Yeah, I think you'll be able to get uh, at least some of them here, but Fnatic have the earlier move with Jun heading over. There's no teleport on Humanoid, though, because of the early skirmish and loss, so now their mid laner is not going to be here. It looks a little sketchy. Yep, two of the grubs already taken down. That was where Tarzan invested his smite. That won't be contested on the third one. So maybe Fnatic going to be putting a little bit more pressure on the next spawn. Yeah, it's one of the benefits, too, of having Misfortune as your bottom laner. You saw Light kind of walking up very quickly with the strut movement speed. And once you see the bottom lane has also made the rotation here. No chance for Fnatic. So three grubs plus the early two kills for Weibo is massive for them. We talked about them really wanting to snowball uh, with the, especially the top three champions on the map. Kind of the worst of both worlds for Fnatic as well, because you don't really have anything that you can do there towards the grubs with the rotation. As uh, Razor maybe looking for a play here. Yep, gonna be spotted on a ward as he does make his way in, but there's Jun with the engage. They do a lot of damage and light will be going down. Jun's still gonna be sacrificed, so a one for one in the end, but this might give Fnatic enough time to grab some plates as well. That's the punish of that lack of summoners onto light, and it makes the previous grub play feel a little bit less bad, because ideally you'd be looking for a side lane play or for a cross map. Fnatic didn't really find anything there with this kill. Onto life and it going to Noah as well. It's a lot of power necessary still. About 800 gold behind, but at least they're trying to stem the bleeding. And you do pay a small price uh, by showing Jungle up for that dive as they stop the recall here from Oscarin. Uh, by showing Jungle up there, Tarzan moves in and steals away your red buff as well. So a very small yeah. price to pay, uh, but still being able to get it. Well, it's a two for one. You've got three grubs as well. 
There you go. So in the extended trade, definitely still not the end of the world. And I really like this play from Fnatic, exactly what we talked about. When there is an enemy with no summoners that needs to be punished, Jun goes for the Q flash. And from that point on, Light doesn't really have any counterplay. Yep, all slam comes through from Razok, and that is all she wrote. And I think you're happy to trade Jun for that one. As Went yells. to Crisp as well. Just have to see exactly how this one's going to go. Crisp, I think he could be deadly on this Leona. We've seen Leona's pick up some Power kills Leona, in the past. Yeah. Battle Leona. Exactly. Battle Leona is something to be feared, Chronicler, as we know. Tarzan going to be starting off the first Dragon, though. We'll see where the Fnatic can get down here and try to contest. Looks like there is a couple in the area, but with Razok going home, looking like that is just going to be given over. I think the first Dragon, not something you ne uh, necessarily need to lose your minds over. 600 gold the lead for Weibo, but I think to go back to what we were talking about in the draft, this isn't that bad, right? For Fnatic, they have this composition that can certainly survive into the later stages, and Weibo sort of have to get more of a lead than this to feel comfortable. Yeah, I think what I'm worried for for Fnatic is mostly is second grub fight, um, because I feel like Weibo are going to have a big advantage there. You know, Renekton on second grubs is, is always uh, a monster, something difficult to deal with, and We'll see about the swaps if they can get back, but currently Tarzan on the bottom side as we're still a minute away from that second grub pack spawning, and he wants to punish bot. Yeah, there's the bullet time to come through there. Not really doing very much, but Noah still has to use the cleanse. The ignite comes down afterwards. Good sidestep there from at least Noah, but Jun unfortunately is going to be left to the wolves. Nice magnet storm just to make sure that his Varus is safe, but it's not going to keep him alive as Light gets his revenge. Still massively successful gank there for Tarzan. Gets both summoners from Noah, and even though you don't get the kill, they're going to be able to shove in that wave. Kill going Going over to light and Weibo with this Nidalee really trying to snowball the game as much as they can. And that just makes me really even more worried for the Grub fight because now like you're saying, yeah. with no summoner spells for Noah uh, and Weibo having breathe with the ultimate ready for Renekton definitely looks very scary, but they are swapping them over. So Noah and Jin headed up to the top half of the map. Now Oscar going to be seen there on the recall, but breathe not going to force him away or anything like that. One advantage that Fnatic got, because, you know, June died earlier, uh, they have been able to get Vision, set it up here, so they do still really want to go. I do think that the gold lead that is there for Weibo isn't by itself detrimental, but if they're getting cut, uh, cut yeah, of guard... Yeah, does come through, does find the stun into the wall. The Impale comes through, but he was stunned. Not actually going to bring him anywhere and breathe with that ultimate. is keeping himself alive for so long. Almost survives, but doesn't. Gets cut down by Noah. He's going to be traded through, though. Both top laners to go down as Chris getting taken down over and over again. You can see Razok down low. Jun as well just trying to get out the crash down the flash. And Fnatic are out of there. But are they healthy enough to still fight for this objective? I don't know about that. Yumanot, I think, flashed over there. They really needed more kills to make that worth their while. Wow. Oh, Chris, finding the interruption yeah. on the recall. will be able to take down Humanoid there, and that means these grubs are definitely going over to Weibo. That is such a tragedy for Fnatic. Chronicler, Humanoid did flash over into the Tri-Brush in yeah. the earlier play, and so then here, while he's recalling by the Tri-Brush at their tower, just gets spotted by Crisp, and Chris just waits around. They get another one, Weibo here. Even though it starts out uh, with a, a decent like focus onto the Renekton, it's still turned around so nicely. And notice that it actually takes Xiaohu a long time to join and teleport in, but Fnatic know that that possibility is here. The big thing is that you are throwing everything, including Humanoid's offensive flash, into uh, like lightest summoners and a Renekton. Like level 9 Renekton has his uh, ultimate available. They invest so much, meaning that they don't actually have the tools to then win the fight the moment that Xiao does TP in. And then that alone would have already been rough, and you're sh for sure going to lose the grubs. But then the fact that because he doesn't have the flash, Crisp with a really nice read cancels the recall. Yeah. And right now, things are looking dire. Relate. And Xiaohu went back and he finished his Kraken Slayer oh. and his Mercury Treads. Oh, so God. you thought he was going to play very aggressively previously, but now with the tenacity and the magic resist of your Merc Treads on top of your offensive ability to punish, like, this is Xiaohu unleashed. Very, very scary. As Weibo with six grubs as well, and the fact that they have double AD carry, if they're given any time on these turrets, it is going to be a disaster. One minute until the plates do fall down. We'll see whether they're able to co collect any more of that money. But I think there is a lot on Fnatic trying to, that need to keep away 
Weibo from these turrets to eliminate the opportunity to get all of the extra cash. Let, let Oscar get it there. back. Man, every time. Yeah. I feel uh, like that's that's what we see on screen when we pan over top lane. Uh, uh, actually, not too bad though for Fnatic. This is working. As, uh, obviously, top side was, I think, going to get taken nonetheless with their bot lane already showing towards that bot wave. You can't really fight this top side right now. 3 0 on Chao Hu. Uh, Tarzan, obviously, really, really fed due to the early impact that he's made. And Brief, even though he was focused in the last fight, like still very much doing his job. That one turret, I think, was okay. Definitely can't give this one up. Yeah, Oscar giving it alone enough, not is it. not going to be enough. Again, six grubs. Yeah, they're just hitting it. Tarzan as well can't it's, give attack speed over to Xiao Hu. It is just going to be taken out, and that that's what happens. I think you can't really adjudicate how much damage you're going to do in what amount of time with these six but scrubs it, there. It's just not really it's working. It's Nora's been here for forever. It's Lethality Varus. Like, he's trying his hardest, but he doesn't have a lot of attack speed to get through the turret. Yeah, it doesn't quite work. It's Chris taking a little bit of damage there, but not really too much to worry about as Noah finally does get through that structure. And so I think six plates to seven is uh, where it was at, if uh, memory serves. So not actually that bad, but an inner turret going down? Yeah, it, exactly. Uh, it's very rare in this, uh, you know, check-in at the 14-minute mark and where they're checking in on turret plates for also a secondary turret <laughs> yeah. uh, to have already been taken. So much extra gold there, and Weibo doing a very good job of accelerating off of the early success of their plays. Remember, it all started with their success in those small skirmishes, uh, and then being able to translate that up to the grub fight is just kind of insanely difficult now for Fnatic to really retake control. Uh, maybe when they get Humanoid to level 11 on the Syndra, because he at least does have the Storm Surge now, there is huge burst potential in this item. Uh, currently, it, that item is in a very good state, so if, if Humanoid can get his level 11 to, uh, you know, just a tiny bit of experience here, then maybe that R button outplay will be the start of something good for them. The problem with Fnatic falling this far behind for me is that even though, again, I think that composition is, is a little bit more playable when you are in a deficit because of the oh, CC. Oh, Crisp is deep. But do you he have the damage? very far forward as Brief does get through the turret. Let's see how Eclipse is going to work here. Taxi's out with the Zenith Blade. As now Oscar in and he's trying to make his way and he's teleporting right on top of two members of Weibo. And now he's dashing after Tarzan. Flashes over the wall. Tarzan should be taken down here. But meanwhile, the rest of the fight, the culling comes on through. Oscar in is able to finally take down the Nidalee as Xiao Hu dashing through, finds that piercing light, but can he get anything oh, more Oscar, as the wraparound's coming through? This could be the team fight. Another huge counter-strike on the two! As Humanoid gets the kill on the Misfortune, the damage is falling, and Fnatic will find it! It's the reverse Fnatic! They fell behind early, but find a monster fight here! And just as I was wondering, do they have the damage to kill Crisp? Well, they did, but everyone else from Weibo joined as well. And it all started there when Oscar's teleport comes in, and he just says, forget it. I'm going all in on Tarzan here. I'm just going to punish this Nidalee, whatever's right in front of me. He comes in with the instant counter-strike, does not hesitate, follows Tarzan over every wall that Nidalee tries to jump over. And after he gets this kill, Weibo are now pincered. Like, they have no way out. He's got them trapped. He goes back. He actually heals up on some honey fruit in the river. So after he's already taken down the Nidalee, he comes in with another Counter-Strike, healed back up to 50%, and just immediately takes down Light. Beautiful stuff from Fnatic to fight their way back in. And what's crucial there is the amount of damage that Rezor tanked. Got yeah. the early sp uh, spear that was thrown towards Humanoid. Also, the calling from Xiao didn't actually end up amounting to, to anything. And you saw, without him really pumping out a lot of damage and Tarzan taking out of the fight immediately, wasn't too much that Weibo could do there. That, that's a tough play to do as well. You know, th this is an elimination series. Uh, and, and Oscar, on teleporting in, the game is starting to slip away it's from you. Lord. Yeah, they know exactly what Razok's trying to do here, but he doesn't waste any time. He's just going to drive on through. They do get the charge out of the Rift Herald, but not too much more than that. And the turret will survive. It's Fnatic now set up to play defense, take control of mid lane, and move into the Weibo jungle. Their bit of vision here available defensively from Weibo. I think they've been very good at keeping wards down, keeping traps around, make sure that they have as much information as possible. But right now you can see that Fnatic feels so much more confident than they did about five minutes ago. And with the gold lead a lot more equal, especially once John has his flash available again, like Weibo, as strong as I think they are when they are the ones initially setting the fight, you see if Crisp gets taken out early and he doesn't actually get to provide the CCS, no, I'm 
Should be okay here. Doesn't seem like he's too friend. Getting a lot of value out of the uh, Edge of Night there. Yep. It's a bit more of an attack speed build. Not really going to be buffing up the uh, Cullen damage as much as others could be uh, for Xiaohu here. Still very, very deadly. Yeah, I think it does. That, that little play does kind of demonstrate some possibilities from Weibo later on, too, because not only Noah, but also Humanoid. You know, oh, yeah. Both of the carries here for Fnatic have pretty low mobility uh, if they don't have their summoner spells. And so Leona ultimate can set up not only the poke from Illusion ultimate, but also Tarzan spears. So uh, there actually is a lot of long range danger here for Fnatic to have to, to deal with, not to mention uh, the misfortune as well. Cool. I'm Objective up yet, just yet. Both teams just fighting for control of the river. But if either team can get the ocean, I think that, particularly against the spears, very high value. But a lot of these comps feel really bursty. So I don't know if you really want to prioritize too heavily towards getting those. Maybe instead look for gold on the cross map. Yeah. The reason I was freaking out so much for that last fight, though, is because it, it actually does so much to allow Fnatic some more counterplay. If, if the Jax is in a good condition, being able to have the split push, but then also set up for the objectives here with very strong frontline on the Skarner and, and the Rel just gives Fnatic so many more options in this game that had looks like they had started to close uh, because of Weibo's dominant early game. But really big stuff there from Fnatic and especially Oscar to get themselves into a much more capable situation. I also expected Weibo to get that mid lane turret down, which obviously gives you so much more pressure and, and makes it a lot harder to play for Fnatic. But that didn't actually happen, right? Like they threw down the Herald, but when they got the Herald, it looked like that mid lane turret was guaranteed gone. But that bot lane fight also took a lot of threat away. And now you can see, I think for Noah in particular, as you point out, like even with Edge of Night, this is a guy that needs to be very careful with his positioning, but having a turret to go back to for Lefeli Varus is a big deal. Yeah, it he is. is. Bit of a battle here, but it is going to be Noah helping out with his piercing arrow. Razok going to be able to grab that smite on the blue buff. And as we've just ticked over 20 minutes, it's now on everyone. It feels very, very nice. Fnatic now pretty set up for this dragon. It's spawned just now as we were talking about it. And it's still a fair bit of vision available. There are a few traps available here. Uh, so Weibo do understand what's going on, but they will, I think, look to take down this turret first. And let's see where the Fnatic let them. It's another smash on the wall. Oh. Triple Impale from Razov. There's the Counter-Strike as well. He barely needed it. Xiao just going to fall crisp immediately afterwards. And the rest of Weibo are reeling. They're going to lose the dragon. They could lose more. It's a double fake out. Weibo also think, okay, we can give up this Drake, who cares, it's the first Drake, we can take mid turret, but Fnatic are ready to punish. Yeah, Razork says, get off of our turret now! It's and, still there! And Xiaohu <laughs> tried to finish it. Xiaohu has flash, by the way, Chris has flash, by the way, and they wanted to finish the turret. They thought they could finish the turret in time, that then they could turn and take the fight, but the Skarner is just driving right at you. You have to respect it. They do not respect it. He can't finish the turret, and he just gets clapped up by the ultimate, immediately taken down. Huge for Fnatic here. What a punish. And that's Xiaohu going down, the most fat member on Weibo, the one that's supposed to provide the damage and tried to dash out of the Impale, but simply too late. If he flashes there, I can see Weibo turn around that fight. Grief was at the ready, Tarzan wasn't ready threatened. And if it's just Crisp, I think that's playable, but instead, yeah. Fnatic now with a gold lead. And a kill lead as well. With a composition like this feels absolutely fantastic because Weibo, they were starting to run away with things. As soon as that bot lane fight happened, you could even see the split, right? Tar Tarzan hanging so far back as Crisp and Xiaohu were looking to try and greed for that turret. <laughs> I could hear the comms, you know, in my in my mind's ear. Uh. I could hear it. It's Tarzan <laughs> saying, please don't die. And they were just just still underneath that turret there. Ear. <laughs> yeah, my mind's ear. That's what I was going for. You know how you say mind's eye, but I couldn't see it. I yeah, could hear it. Could hear so it. it sort of had I, to be my mind's ear. I totally ear. understood what you're going yeah, for. <laughs> and then he had clearly, to just make it on the thing. problem. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Apologies, Atlas. <laughs> I didn't mean to. Okay, I don't think that that one's being coined before. Please let me know if you That's have an any idea. That's special. <laughs> yeah. But you made me feel like right, right home about something was not actually a thing that people said, Kobe. So I never know when I'm on a desk with you whether know, something's real or not. I, I traumatized you with that <laughs> you one. You really yeah. did. I heard somebody else okay, say it I, with you just the other day, I, I, and I was like, he's not berating him for it. I really <laughs> want to hear this. I feel like we need to focus on the game. We'll oh, okay, look yeah, back enough, to this enough. later. We'll, we'll unpack our trauma later. <laughs> As uh, we do see now, third item done. Noah 
on Lethality Varus, and Varus in general, but I think with Lethality Varus you do have a, a lot more innate safety because of the fact that you can use your range a lot more, but still, into uh, particularly a possible brief flank or crisp, he needs to stay on point, but as long as the summoners are there for this AD carry, I think Weibo are going to have a tough time as Breathe. Yeah, Breathe is going to find Jun here, but also a few extra friends that maybe he didn't want to hang out with as there's a teleport coming through as well. He is soaking a lot. The Sterix is going to be there. The zoning Impale comes through and the culling just tickling Oscar Ennen, who still dives forward. I'm not sure about that one. Shao going to finish him off in the end. Bullet time not doing a whole lot of anything. And the minion wave is there to soak these spears. In the end, it is going to be a one for one. Both top lane is falling down, but Crisp losing his health bar and Tarzan just don't think he can quite do enough here as still Weibo are trying to push forward not finding too much really good flash there from Shahu if he ends up getting counterstruck I think this might be an opportunity for Fnatic but now instead Weibo trying to punish with Humanoid not having teleport available I don't think they should I don't think the game state is that desperate that they have to flip for Baron so they rightly so decide not to yeah it's actually something you see a, a decent amount with Fnatic after they make a good play then they get a little bit too antsy with trying to squeeze more out of it. And Could have Oscar just taken the Renekton. Exactly. Oscar was a little bit too greedy in the, like, the plus one on top of the play. Because here, Breathe is so separated from the rest of Weibo. You know, his plan as they approach the brush is to dodge and outplay, but he can't last long enough for the rest of Weibo to get here. By the time they get here, he's actually dead. And then the rest of the team actually walks back because of the Leona ultimate. But Oscar was forward from the Leona ultimate, and so he wanted to make the huge play onto Sha uh, Shaohu. But as you mentioned, it's just a flash for flash trade. Have to really pinpoint the timers on those summoner spells uh, and keep that in mind. Also, even though you see how much CC Fnatic has, Jun missing stuff, uh, still leads to the Renekton going down. I'm pretty sure they can actually 100 to 0 brief there if he if they fully stun lock him, right? If the Q goes off, then the crash down, then the sla uh, slam into the wall. Because a really big part of why that fight looked even close was Brave again. Already his level 2 in the ultimate, had his Sterics, and you saw how much time it took to actually take him down. But looking at the summoners, Shao Hu's flash I think is a big deal. Outside of that, nothing too crazy. And this game at 25 minutes still feels like it very much could go either way. It really does. I do still feel like Fnatic are in a great spot, given what they have. We'll just have to see what they do with it. As Breathe pushing in this lane towards the bottom inner turret. Oscar will come over and pick that one up. A couple of items for the Jacks already. I think Breathe going to struggle in the 1v1 against this guy. I think it means so much for Fnatic with this composition. You mentioned already the fact that it's difficult for these less mobile champions to hang out in a side lane. As soon as Oscar's just going to be winning in sides, their line wave clear is absolutely absurd. So you can hold whenever the team is pushing in, even if you have a man disadvantage. What with piercing arrow just hitting from a million miles away and humanoid throwing orbs everywhere. See so how well a good spot. how well Oscar can channel Bin. Because yeah. we saw yesterday. And actually, him going in in that last fight, that made me feel good. Even though it was objectively not a great moment in the fight for Fnatic, but just him having yesterday. that killer instinct. <laughs> It's a great thing to see here for Fnatic up against Weibo right now. Because I think they still need to hold on to that. They still need to not be afraid to just go in for these fights, find these angles. Again, Weibo can give this up when it comes to the power of the objective, but they might feel like they are on a timer. Brief looking for a flank, does get marked by Oscar, and not a lot of vision available here. Yeah, Brief gonna get pushed away. Counter-Strike oh. not really gonna find too much, but Fnatic kind of getting split here as Humanoid off to the side. Doesn't want to have to flash to get in towards a fight here. And Xiaohu clearing out vision over and over. It is going to be the Drake picked up as Razor. You can flash. see it. He wants to find the angle, but that is a beautiful interruption. And the bullet time coming through as well. Going to soften them up. The piercing arrow. I mean, Noah is really hurting right now. 4-0-3 on this Varus. He needs to be respected. And I think that that was like a bullet time that did the same amount of damage as, as the Q from Noah. Yeah. yeah. Lethality Varus, ever since we saw him get buffed again, I think it's more so... Funnily enough, because he used to be an early game powerhouse, but I feel like it's really his late game where it feels now like if you can land these Qs consistently, it's a really, really big deal. Again, Noah Summoners to me, a big thing as well. Xiao Xiao almost has the flash available, which will lead to him being able to play a lot more aggressive. These two Drakes for Fnatic, they're nice, but again, I think that as far as this was an Infernal, if this was a Hextech, I feel very different about this game. Execution still needs to be crisp here on either, uh, on either side, really. But Weibo is going to start reaching the point where, like Oscar Rene, once he finishes his Zonyas, 
that's that's not a target that you're going to be able to go for anymore. And, and Weibo do really need to take someone out of the fight early, unless the high, uh, Light hits a mega ultimate. And Weibo have a lot to dodge as well. Not, it's not just the poke, but also the Syndra long range stun, as well as Noah. If he throws out his ultimate here on the Varus, anyone getting snagged by that very viable pick target. So we'll see about the split push on bottom side, as it is 4-1 for both these teams, trying to battle over mid lane pressure first. Yeah, a lot of power when uh, Fnatic have Oscar in, in the Fog of War. Uh, because the flank angles for these for this Jax can make things really difficult. Because like you say, even dodging things that they can see in, right in front of them is going to be difficult. But when you throw a Jax into the mix as well with that circle of doom that he's going to be carrying in with him, certainly be a problem as Humanoid towards that top side. Holding on to this CS lead of about 20 that he's had almost the entire game. Weibo just trying to figure out that way to get back in. And this is one of the things Fnatic need to be very careful about, and I, I hope Weibo is going to be looking towards, is that when you're in a front to back, Syndra can be really hard to get on top of because of her effective range as well as the scatter. In a side lane though, and I think you can see this, Humanoid needs to be very, very careful. With Lucian, with Renekton, it's a lot easier to get out of possible collapses. For Syndra, not really going to be the case. Same for Noah. But right now, it doesn't look like Weibo really wants to leverage that possibility. Instead, just again, going for these, looking for the 5v5s. I don't know if that's the way to go against Fnatic, because this front line is beefy. In these last 20 seconds, uh, Weibo have been losing resources with the Jack Ooh. split push. Yeah, Shahu trying to get in there. Chris with the flash. Zenith Blade does try CP. to get Humanoid out of the fight. Shahu just going to be taken down, though. Noah says no. That is going to be the bullet time. So there's a trade of mid laners now. But Fnatic feel like they still want this fight. And you can understand why. Chris thrown into the blender and will be chopped He's down. Flashing. And they are not done yet. Smacked into the wall is the crocodile. And Bree just has to slice and dice his way out. And you could feel Oscar wanted to go for the Flash Counter-Strike there. Not going to be the case. Maybe they get mid lane turret. We haven't really mentioned that, but the fact that it's still standing here for Weibo, kind of insane with how this game has gone thus far. No objective, but again, Xiaohu going in a, a little bit way too deep. A little bit way too deep, <laughs> yes. I love it. And, and it's kind of it's two... The, it's the Lucian flank! <laughs> yeah. It's a story of two different engages, because you saw how deep Chris went as well, but there was no follow-up damage for him on Humanoid. Meanwhile, Fnatic have two members just deleting Xiaohu, and so it takes a little bit longer for Weibo to actually find their kill, and by that time, Fnatic have the edge in the team fight to follow oh. through with the chase. What's crucial though is the lesson learned, where this time Oscar doesn't flash with this counter strike. Okay, we, we got what we wanted, we're gonna leave it at that. But that turn from Jun, really big, because taking Xiao again out of the fight, so much damage for Weibo gone. Now, Fnatic did have to invest their teleport from Oscar though, because Oscar was split pushing. So that is something that Weibo can try and look to answer. It looks like they're actually gonna use oh, Breeze now. Pretty big shattering strike to come through there as well, but not a lot of meaningful damage onto this turret. So Weibo is still going to hold onto their outer still in the standing. mid lane. I feel like the siege, especially as these ocean dragons start to stack up for Fnatic, should be really, really strong. But Weibo have been doing a great job defending it so far this game. As Tarzan still just hoovering up his jungle as best he can. Crisp over the wall, unseen for now. Is Razok looking for Bree, the possible angle here. As Chris, with that Hex Flash up and available, channeling now, looking for an angle. Solar Flare going to connect onto Humanoid. The bullet time comes through as well, but it's not enough Ooh. damage. With that culling laid in as well, I think in a lot of game states, with a composition like this, Humanoid is instantly dead, but in the state that it's in now, he's doing okay. He's lucky he's got his teleport, because he can just go back to the fountain, heal up, and teleport back for the dragon fight. Yep, comes in immediately here as Razok playing Dodge the Spear. Game that you're sort of forced into playing when there's an Italy on the field. That is going to be the Ocean Drake being taken down to about half health already here as Spears being avoided. Oscar and still just trying to play that front line. And Razzle, if he stands in front of his team, it's very difficult to get anything past him. You can see he's so incredibly tanky, and that is going to be that third Ocean taken down. And now he's driving forward, finds the slam into the wall. The Impale goes down as well. The Magnus Storm just sucks them all in. And the Renekton Italy just lying on the floor in an instant. Fnatic actually know that Humanoid getting chunked there was a win for them because Humanoid's teleport is not going to have any use in the fight, but the ultimate from Chris, the ultimate from Light that were used to chunk him out were expended, and so Fnatic have the advantage in the fight. They take the objective, they get the kill, and they're going to take Baron too. Cross map being set up here for Weibo. Xiaohu going for that, but that's, I think, all they're going to get. Oscar has been sent over. Can TP in case of a crazy 
Weibo contest, but that's not coming through. And Fnatic, I think the expectations, particularly after uh, some of their previous games, not going to be very high. But what's the key thing to me here, outside of that one play from Oscar, they have looked so restrained, which is definitely something <laughs> they should do given the lessons they've learned throughout the year. But it's, I think, the big difference maker in the series so far. Certainly is, and, and coming into this one, when, when you don't have that Leona, Misfortune, or Lucian Ultimates on the side of Weibo, they're just kind of standing around watching, you know, poking at the dragon, see if they could steal it or something. Uh, Light here, let's see if he gets any autos off. He walked all the way around, he I'm, casted an E. He, yeah. got, he got so by Oscar, like Oscar just walked up to a helicopter, he's like, oh no. <laughs> Can't at get at near this point, this. I'm feeling like AP Misfortune would have been the option. Um, yeah, get that Leanders in there. Yeah, get that E damage working out as Fnatic with the Baron now pushing down. They finally get the outer turret in the mid lane. And the inner might be following, although they do run out of minion wave. Still, this is so much control. And you can see they're playing as if but they have checkmate. They've been playing like that for the last 10 minutes. That could worry some people, but we'll see yeah, whether it works Yeah, I was about to say out. that, but now comes actually killing the Nexus. And I think first, getting inhibitors, right? Makes it so much easier to play the map. I hear you, you do have, have to do that. There was a, uh, a super team that we had that got caught up with the whole in inhibitor debacle. So yes, yeah. you do need to kill those. <laughs> it's, it's a big deal. It is a big deal. As Fnatic now just looking for a mini wave in mid lane. Top lane is not really something that they can play through right now, but bottom mid is somewhere that they should be able to crack at least. Yeah, Oscar should be going back there, catch that one, so that they're at least playing on two waves. But they want to be careful. We have been very proactive about continuously looking for these fights. I mean, it, it, from this point on, it is just so easy Ow. for Fnatic. Oh, what? Because yeah, Wa Waymo's comp has just run out of steam, and Fnatic have all the advantages here. They have an advantage in split push, they have an advantage in siege. Their, their front line is massive. Weibo would have to come up with some miracle play from Chris. But honestly, a Leona ultimate would oh, be their dream or scenario. A crazy flag. Yeah, Breathe looking for that angle. You can see the crocodile making his way in. Chris going to start up the fight as Razzle just him. a brick wall in front. And they will just choose to kill the Leona. And she's going to go down extremely quickly. The bullet time not really doing too much. The culling, culling, falling, falling suit. And oh. Oscar going to into the back line. A triple kill just instantly. That's one egg of a Strike for that engage is breathe. Not going to be doing enough here. And Jun just going to come back just to help out with these guys as Razok is immortal. This Skana is never going to die. At least not for the rest of this game. Is now Fnatic looking to push further forward and try to break open this base. And Noah falls, but I don't think he's going to be feeling bad about this one, Kobe. It's Fnatic with the outscale. It's Fnatic with the comeback. Oh my goodness, this was not on my bingo card this morning, but I'm very happy to sketch it in in crayon as these Nexus turrets are falling down and Fnatic on their home turf will not be pushed away by Weibo in game one. Not with that early game composition, they'll move up 1-0 in the series. And Weibo... The early game, maybe not quite as high pace as we were looking for, but still, a lot of the things that you want. Xiaohu, getting a lot of early kills. Tarzan, being active on the map, wasn't enough. It didn't quite work out. And sometimes, you know, you see these early game compositions and you're like, oh, that feels good because you've got confidence for a team. Those things don't work out and feel absolutely terrible exactly what happened in that game one. But it's the best of three, so they can try and turn things around. It is now time for us to go to a short break. When we get back, we'll get ready for that game number two. See you then. Gives you wings.
Thank <laughs> you.